Welcome back to Freedom Forest and the Growing Corn for Self-Sufficiency series. I thought this might be the last video, but things are growing really well here, so I thought it'd be nice to do an update video before we do the final harvesting in October. Hope you enjoy. It's now the 11th of September, and behind me is our blue Hopi corn, now pushing on for almost nine foot in height. It's been looking good, it's tasseled and the cobs are forming, so we're going and have a little look, shall we? I absolutely love these tall varieties of corn, and this is a flint corn, meaning it's very hard and you let it dry out on the actual plants themselves before harvesting, and you grind it up to make a corn flour. Now, the taller varieties like this lend themselves really well to the three sisters, and in here we have the pink banana squash and runner beans as well. So unlike with sweet corn, I'm not waiting for the tassels to turn brown like this one before I harvest them. I'm actually going to let this entire cob dry out and go a yellow strawy colour. And then just before the season gets too cold and damp, I will harvest these and dry them. Most commercially available sweet corn varieties wouldn't lend themselves very well to growing runner beans and allowing the squashes to climb up the stems like I've done here. And that's because most of them are bred to be short season varieties which means they will only maybe get to three or four foot and then start to get their tassels and fruit. And they're also F1 varieties as well, which means you can't collect your own seed and reliably get good results every year. But there are a couple of older heritage varieties of sweet corn that will get to taller heights like this, but it's a bit harder to find them. This beautiful companion planting gift from the Native Americans just keeps giving because as I've mentioned before, the corn stalks provide the climbing lattice for the beans, the beans fix nitrogen into the soil, and the large paddle-like meandering leaves of the squashes help to shade out the ground and the spiky stems deter some pests. And as if that wasn't amazing enough, all three of these crops are long-term storage crops. So the corn, once dried, can be hung and will last actually several years and the beans as well we we'll leave to dry on the plants as well as the corn and we will then pod those and they can be stored in jars and the squashes as well again we'll leave them to mature on the plants so we can come in at the end of the season and do all of our harvesting and they will all last and not only that all three of these have actually been shown to give this full spectrum of nutrients the body needs as well so an amazing, amazing companion planting gift for self-sufficiency. You may remember in the previous episode, some of these blue Hopi blew over in the wind. And I said not to worry because they will self-regulate and grow back up straight again. And here they are. I could have wasted a lot of time coming in and trying to stake these or put soil around the bases, but they know what they're doing. Along the side of the bed here behind me are the plants that I sowed direct that you may have seen in an earlier episode. And as you can see, these have grown up just as well as the module planted plants, uh, reach full height and maturity pretty much the same time. There was only maybe three or four days in it. Um, and they're producing what looks to be some quite nice cobs as well. And something I'm also really excited about is last year, uh, I had one plant that had this really nice purple characteristic with the purple stem and the purple leaves uh, on the cob as well. And I saved those seeds and put them in our seed mix. And we have several plants of those traits come this year as well. So I'll definitely save these and keep putting them in our seed mix for further plantings. Behind me here is another bed of glass gem corn. And this is another flint type corn that we leave to dry on the stems. And these are good for long-term storage. And this is a popping corn. And the plants you see on the left of me are the 
direct sown plants and the plants on the right are the plants that I raised in modules. And again, you can see there's not really any difference in um, their stage of maturity they're at and their height and their health as well. And the plants to the right of me, actually, we have a three sisters planting in these uh, with some more runner beans and some Uchiki curry squash as well. Also, did you know sunflowers are another Native American crop? And these were grown and stored for their seed, again, which was dried and was pounded into a flower. Some tribes also grew rows of these between different corn varieties to prevent cross-pollination. And you can see why they're called sunflowers. And moving on finally to the sweet corn bed. Now this one is a bit patchy as you can see. It's not so dense as our other plantains. And that was because we suffered a bit with the germination rate on this variety of sweet corn. Also, I did plant them in amongst potatoes, which are a companion plant to corn, but the potatoes were a bit too dense and they shaded out the plants a lot while they were young. So if I was gonna do this again, I would have potatoes a lot more sparsely planted to allow the corn more light, which is gonna enable it to shoot up and establish faster. Something I touched on earlier in the video was that a lot of the modern, smaller grown sweet corn varieties don't lend themselves very well to the Free Sisters method with growing beans as a lattice work on top of them. And here is an example. This is the Native American Trail of Tears variety of bean here. And I planted these direct when the corn was about half a foot to a foot tall. And as you can see, they have quite smothered the plants here. And these aren't as vigorous as something like a runner bean as well. And as you can see, it's really covered the tassels as well and kind of held them. So that is gonna affect the pollination or the pollen dropping down onto our tassels below. So sweet corn, unless you're growing a taller, longer season variety, probably not best for the beans. Well, as always, I hope you've enjoyed having a look around, seeing how things are growing here at Freedom Forest and what we're up to. And I hope you've really enjoyed the video and hopefully learned something from it. And if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, please do so now by pressing the subscribe button below. And definitely, if you could just take a second of your time to press the like button as well, and maybe leave a comment if you've got any questions or anything else you'd like to let us know. Look forward to seeing you again. Peace and plants.